Hello, hello, Rhoda here. Welcome to my craft room. Today we're seeing number one of the four Poe journals. Uh, each one is a little different and varied in uh, style. Most of them have the same things in them. They may be in a different place. Some I ran out of the same paper, so I used different papers. Uh, so you'll get to see all different uh, aspects of it. And we'll be seeing one probably about every other week, or every week, I mean, uh, leading up to Halloween and my journal, the one I'm keeping for myself, I'm probably going to put a little bit more in it. So that one will be for Halloween. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, this one, I chose to put these square nail heads in the cover. Um, I'm still kind of taking off of the white rabbit journals idea on how she did her front cover. And I did a die cut here. And uh, put the Poe, I cut the Poe in an oval. So he set in there. This is a little piece of lace back in here. And it has a little bit of a red thread in it. I don't know if that's just because it was, it was old or what. And it just started turning. I have the braid here to, and then I ripped this little piece here uh, to put the braid on. Um. Uh, the next journal, I, I use brads instead of these things because these were kind of hard to, to mess with. I do have the metal corners on this journal right here and here and on the back. And I did not do the, the spine yet. I forgot to do the spine before I did this. I'm recording this right before, the day before I have to go to West Virginia. So let me show you my idea for the spine. Now I've got this old uh, rose kind of a trim that I found at Hobby Lobby and I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it in two rows on the back. Not every one of them will get it because I don't think I have enough but it'll be sort of like that and it another one will be beside it. So I think that'll make a really cute cover. Uh, Sorry, I'm over here putting it away. Uh, a, a, nice, a nice piece for the cover. It's soft enough to mash, but it's uh, sheer enough that you can still see the paper, but you'll be able to to actually, you know, see a little detail. Now, this back here just has this little bit of like a postmark on it, so I just left it. Uh, as you can see, I got in here last night and got all of these laces in on the ends here. And I just kept adding and kept adding. I had a little bit of a, a, a lace that I had tons and tons of, but it was like a little thin gathered lace. Uh, and so I used that there and uh, in a few other spots when I didn't have any. I don't know how long I've had it. I don't know how much it cost. <laughs> I've been trying to keep the cost uh, figured out on these. So when I sell them, I'll know. <laughs> Anyhow. This is the cover. I chose not to put a pocket on it because I just didn't want to, you know, <laughs> I didn't think it needed a pocket. These are more like probably going to be a lookbook. I did want to put these circles on here and I tried to get them as close as I could. It is hard to do that. I can tell you that. So once you flip this open, then you have a CD pocket and I've got a little bit of a, a shear that I got from Dollar Tree with a spider webs on it. This is a gold spider web. I have a little bit of the paper lace I cut out and a few little um, twigs of flowers. Now this is sealed shut. You can't get into Poe, uh, but you can see where you can get over here and do a little bit of writing on here. This is part of the pink monarch prints. And that reminds me, I'm probably going to try to get everything down in the description box because um, I've used a uh, three two two different no three different digitals i believe so i'll have all of that down there and uh the theme is mostly in here spiders and it's got and excuse my fingers i forgot my fingers too okay i dyed a little bit of black lace last night with some spray and it did not go black it did dark brown or dark gray uh, but most of it went under my fingernails um Anyhow, <laughs> so spider webs, spiders, skulls, gothic, you know, that kind of thing is, is all part of this journal. And I wanted to circle this little guy, so there is another circle cut out as well, just for fun, you know, just for fun. 
And this is part of the, the kit back here that I got from my porch prints. Oh, I need to move this back over. But I saw it last year and I thought, oh, I got to do me a journal with that. So I did it this year. Um, another inspiration from the White Rabbit journals was these little clustery things that she did with like scrap paper and uh, laces and things like that. So I made this one into a tuck. This is one of the journal cards. Has big old spider web on it. And you can tuck him back in there like that. And it has a dangle. I showed most of these things I have a video on um, that I created in here. Uh, and I've, I thought about these button dangles. And I thought, well, that's an, a unique way without having a lot of bulk. Although the button, <laughs> the button adds bulk, let me tell you. All right. We get over here. We have a pocket with um, a spider in it. <laughs> and... Uh, I, I had these, oh, that's a fourth, that's a fourth digital that I used. Okay, so there's four digitals. <laughs> but there was these, po I was always using Poe if I could. And then this was one of my own dyed papers. And I did a little bit of stenciling with some skulls on it. I only did it in this one. I, it was just, I wanted to do stenciling, but then I thought, no, I don't need it. <laughs> I don't need it. Uh, here is a book. It, everything is made to where you can write on it. So you can write and, and journal in here. Some pages are left blank for you to be able to do that. This was a little, what do they call these? Uh, coin envelope, I think. So I decorated that up to go in this pocket. Yeah, I had fun doing these pockets. Uh, Chesty has sent me a bunch of great things. And I... Uh, Put them all into these pockets and each one of the journals got them uh this here uh, i think it was a combination of what i saw right white rabbit journals doing so this little button down here slides and it'll slide open i have a pocket here that holds these two cards which that was the witch um there's a feather tucked back in here and I don't know whether he's to come. He can come out if you want to. It's just a vellum pocket that holds it. I got a big old spider climbing over here. Um, then this is actually a pocket inside here. And the one kit gave me several of his his writings and and poems and things. So that one's the bells, and that one tucks back in here. And then there, under here is another pocket with like an Ouija board. And this was just a scrap. And then I've got another pocket here <laughs> with this old lady. And um, I have a one of the drugstore drug items up there. Okay, this is a pocket with a big old spooky moth. I thought I was going to have more moths in here than I do. But I just, you know, I didn't want to work them in. Now, this is a bird cage to have to do with, like, the feather and the crows and that kind of thing. And here's a real pretty crow that's in here with them. And that will go just like that. And this is another pocket with some cool digitals. I don't know where Chestia got them, but I love them. And there's a journal card. And I have Lenore here because... I figured that that was who this was, Lenore. Oh, I forgot to <laughs> seal that back up. Sorry. <laughs> and, yeah. So, this is Lenore. And that's one of his pens. And uh, it starts the raven out there. And this is actually where he's buried up in uh, Baltimore. I've went to the grave. Now, this is not the grave right here. This is at Westminster Church. You can see it in the background. has graves up underneath of it everywhere. And then this is at the very front. And it has all four of them, their names on here. Or all three names. It's got him and his wife and his mother-in-law are on here. And I don't even know if they buried. There's no tombstone back in the cemetery for anybody but Poe and his grandfather that I've seen. The other ones may be back in there. I don't know. I can't remember. Um, but there's always a rose that's left on here on the um, 
what is it? It's the anniversary of his death, I believe. But somebody is always putting a rose there. Nobody really knows who it is. It, it's kind of, uh, it, to this day, I mean, that's when it's happening. So anyhow, I thought that was really cool. Now I've got some of my uh, deck paper. <laughs> I laid that on the deck. You can see the nails. And um, here is kind of a tuck that I decided to make with all these little uh, goo-gahs and a cluster. And this is, I, I said, the angel of the odd because you can see all those crows flying around up in there. And I thought that that must be one of his poems or something. Now, this is a real pretty lace. Everybody seems to like that. I've got it in several spots here. And this is a like a book spine kind of a page so I decided to cut out the black cat the predicament and mystification they kind of fit so I'll put them on these book spines this here is my cutout for a um it's like a, a what does I call it it's a <laughs> now I can't think of it <laughs> It's a, uh, a belly band. There we go. It's a belly band, but it's a cutout belly band. It's not one you had to, like, uh, glue on there. So I thought that was kind of a cool idea. It's just two strips cut out of the paper. And then there's one of his original Eulalie. That one's tucked in here. So I went all the way through. And then this is like a little double journal card that you're able to write in. And in behind here, and I've changed this on the next three. This is the only one that's made like this. And I didn't like the way it worked. I do have a skull back there. And I tried to make it look like it was actually the spine of a book where this was at. And then this is a bookmark that you can use <laughs> throughout the uh, journal if you would choose. And then that just kind of tucks back in there like that. Then you put this back in. I thought it had, it. it's a belly band with uh, steroids. You can do so much with it. Uh, and then on the back side, I wasn't crazy about seeing through that. So I made this. And this is uh, another belly band with a pocket. And so I've got my death dealer card. This is one of those that I made. And it goes in here. And then you have the full story of the raven here. And I decided on this one that I was going to put my um, writing fluid. And like he was writing the raven. So that is on here as well. And you can see the it's five or six or about, yeah, about four full lines of it. And you can see I did not like to see this. That's that ulele sticking through here. And I wasn't crazy about it. So I had to find something to put back here. And this worked. So these two go here. They, they just tuck behind the belly band. Then you have a pocket on the belly band. And I've got the raven on it. And then I've got one of the tickets here with the uh, crow. And then I've got the nevermore or the raven, whatever. And a little, little twig and a uh, paper lace. Okay. I like that. I liked how that turned out. It really, it's really sharp. Uh, we have another blank that you could write on. We have one of the old houses that's in the kit. I really love the houses. And then this page. Oh my gosh, this one was sucking up the black ink. Look at it. And it's dark. So you got an image of Poe back here and his, his signature. And here was like a bookmark. Also, oh, I forgot to do the back side of that with, uh, okay, let me tuck that out a little bit. <laughs> Um, here's another one of my pockets, an old cemetery entrance, and the crow, and it's got like a bug a fly <laughs> down in there, and uh, I put some of the lace here on the edge. All right, let me tuck that a little further, won't, I'll remember it. This is the, one of the first pages I made, um, that I really thought turned out good. This here is, uh, my ma's. And uh, actually, it's, I think it's a locust. I keep calling it a moth. But I've got it to where this, um, they call this a, a bulb clip is in there. And it's got this dangle on it. Now, I do intend to put dangles on some of the lace here. I just never got around to it yet. Like I did, the, I didn't do the spine. Now, I have a book of superstitions. And I've got all these superstitions that can go in it. 
or, or, or that are in here that I'll be pulling out. I don't know if you want me to read it all, but this is about a cobweb, so that's why I have it across from here. The web of a spider is said to have concealed the infant Jesus from Herod's soldiers, and perhaps it is for this reason that cobwebs are regarded as very lucky. In stables and barns, they should never be cleared away as they protect the livestock, and it is widely believed that destroying a cobweb on purpose will only provoke misfortune. No punishment will be exacted against a person who runs into a spider's web by accident, but this may mean that a friend is about to appear. A similar, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Okay, I'll stop there. I just thought that was kind of interesting to put some of these definitions in here. And um, here is <laughs> a spooky card there. And uh, this really creepy guy there. Ugh. Some of those people, they reminded me of the ones on the Tim Holtz, uh, the sticker book. <laughs> really creepy. Now, this is a little belly band here that I got a little spider on. It, I think I keep thinking that says Ramesses. But I don't think that's that. It says Ramesses. It's something else. But it keeps making me, me that loves, you know, anything Egyptian, I'm seeing Ramesses. <laughs> All right, and this is some of my splatter paper I'd done outside, and I actually dipped it, and it's got some of that mica. I, I dipped it in some mica or threw it on there or something, so it's got a little glitter to it. I thought it really, it went really well with this paper. Uh, over here, we have the digital that has this, and I love the skull, so I made a little pocket with some of the paper lace. And one of the candles. I did these candles. Um, I've got three of them in each one. And I'll tell you, it took a long time to make those candles. There were certain pieces that I I had, it took me an hour to figure out where they went. <laughs> it was a long time. All right, so I made this. This was one of the, um, it was supposed to be a tag or a pocket for a tag. And I just made it like that. And it's got this uh, flip up tag in there for you to write on and I put poetry on there it's got his pens and I guess one of the books he was reading now this I never have fixed this either this will be you'll see it change in, a, in the future books but this is my flip out this is supposed to look like a cemetery gate uh, like a big copper cemetery gate and you got this creepy eyeball from the crypt peeking out at you. <laughs> that that's what it's supposed to be. I need to repaint the the eye and put white behind it so it really really stands out. And I just need to do that. All right. So we have this uh, stamp that I put up here as well. I can't remember if I did that for you or not, but I really like how that turned out on that. So. I did it on index card that I had put out in the yard and died. It doesn't have any kind of pockets inside here except for this little one down here. So you're able to write in here if you wanted to or you could write on this index card. This is, um, it, it was really neat to make this. I made it like it was a, um, uh, a, a mat, not masking. It was one of those, uh, techniques Sorry, I had to look at the bottle. It's a resist technique. So you put something on that will be permanent, and then you're able to wipe off if you've got something else going on there. Um, so I thought that was kind of cool. So that goes back in here. And then this flips down first, and it's got a magnet in there. Can you hear it? Yep. <laughs> so it'll stay shut. I didn't want it flopping and flipping. All right, that's the end of the first signature. They all have three signatures. They're all the same in paper amount and all that kind of stuff. And here's a pretty gold that I decided to put on this. And I wanted Poe on the front of each one of the signatures. So that's why he's out here. And I had to create these uh, with just some papers. But then we have this pocket that has Boo on it and Sinister. Each one of them's got a little bit of something different. But we have a tiny tag here and the, the weird guy. And then we have a crow or raven. <laughs> and they all tuck right back down in here. 
this is one of the skinny uh, pockets from the kit. And uh, so I put that on there. Now this is the bells. That's it. <laughs> the bells is in here a couple times, isn't it? <laughs> but it's got a cool looking chain over here, but I don't have a chain. I thought that would be sort of neat to put in. A writing space is here. And here we go. We got some more. We've got this cool pocket with all these little goodies from Chestita on it. And then I wanted to make like little, what do you call these? Um, I don't think they're a flash card, but they may be called a flash card. But I have this stencil that's got four different words on it that I could pick out. And I made the pro, uh, the uh, like a, a definition. Maybe that's it. I wanted to do a definition. So this one's got fright. It's got this. And you can write on the back, and then you got the journal card with the crow, and then you got the definition for bone, and I thought that would go good here because it's a big bony skull. <laughs> and then it, it says, and in the case of blood, bone was assumed by primitive man to contain something of the essence of the soul and was thus the pre, to be pre, treated and real. Re <laughs> I'll stumble over that. Contains something of the essence of the soul and was thus to be treated with respect. Disturbing interred bones risk serious consequences, but conversely, obtaining bits of human and animal bone was frequently of considerable importance to witches and sorcerers. For nu numerous charms and spells uh, require bone as an ingredient. Mm. We won't get any more into that. <laughs> That's creepy. Oh, goodness. That kind of goes with what me and Zach's going to be doing here next week. We're going to be seeing the dead in their uh, in their new abode. Uh, we got a, one cemetery we got to figure out. <clears throat> it's going to be something. And I'm thinking, I'll come back with some stories to tell you. And I have two more of these covers to make. So I may do a cover and show you how I did this as I'm going along and telling you the stories. So that may be something for you to look forward to. All right, here is another one of my Death Dealer cards. This one had a different skull on it and a few different things. And um, you can write on the back of that one. And this is another double journal card. And what they are in is a Rita Donnelly flip. So you would actually flip this up. <laughs> it doesn't have a flipper on it. I might have to make one. Uh, it's it's kind of stuck. But it's not really where you can write on it. It did, you know, go with this one. But, uh, yeah, that's just the way I made it. I don't know if anybody's going to write in these books, to tell you the truth. I know the, the first two ladies are my cousins that want them. And... I think they're for display for Halloween. <laughs> I think that's what they decided they were going to do with them. Here's another one of my candles. This is one of the taller ones. And I think this is one of uh, Edgar Allan Poe's books. And I put a little flower behind it. This one is Lenore. And I put this little feather here. This is another one of my first things that I made. I used some of the black texture paste. And I did the uh, mica spray behind it to go with the color. And it's got a lot of uh, cheesecloth behind it. But I've also got it as a flip out. And I don't know if you're going to see all that. So let me move this over. So here is the flip out of the little envelope. And this is an envelope that came with it. And I, I glued the, the raven here with skull. And I don't know, but I may have some different ones on the other ones. Um, but I've got these two items in there, a journal card to write with or write on. And, um, this was from Chestita. It's like an envelope and I put the bat and the, the, the skeleton on. And I kind of got it tucked like that so he won't slide down in there. And I put him in. Oh, <laughs> like that. And I've got never more down here to go with the crow. This was just bleed through, but hey, that's okay. <laughs> that That is fine. It, it adds to the color. Now this is, um, I think this is another idea from White Rabbit Journals. She had a, a magnetized belly band. It has a little window and you could see through to the, the creature beyond, which this one, some have Poe and some have a raven. 
Uh, and then this, there's a pocket here. And I didn't put anything in these pockets. <laughs> I don't know why. But here's the magnet. And the other magnet is here. So they just kind of snap shut. I got a little bit of goo -gaw on there. Uh, it has the raven here. And it's got one of his stories. Or it's a letter. I'm not really sure. I guess it's a letter because it's from his grandfather, David Poe. Yeah, in 1794. Woo! That was way back there, wasn't it? And I thought those looked good here. I've got all the ravens together. Okay, and then here is one of my little easy projects. It was just some die cuts that I had. I had a die cut of this and the branches in one of my uh, new ones I had purchased, and I just made the moon. Everybody seemed to like how I did. They like how I do all the moons. <laughs> this was a little different than another moon I've got further back. But this is some of my crazy paper that I had out in the yard that I made. And here's some more of my deck paper. And I just love this this lace. It's a flat lace. And the, the tan one back here is just like it. But it's got a rose on it. And see, it's got that rose kind of consistently through here in the digital. And I thought that would work. Now this I showed. This is one of my last things that I did uh, in the last week. Um, before I left for West Virginia and um, it, it's just easy it's like scrap it's pieces that were cut off from the uh, pages that I used in here and I made it a double tuck and I love the way it turned out because especially up here I glued ephemera down and I made it to where it would be uh, kind of layered and I love how it shows these creepy kids and as you can see there's things behind it like some more of the um the drug uh, interaction things and i had a i don't know if that's a microscope or, or what that is so this goes here it's of course you can write on the back you have um the definition for black i mean there's probably better places to put some of these definitions but i just kind of put them where i thought they would fit and it says, of all the colors, black is the one mostly, most closely associated with evil and death. In Western culture, it is the traditional color worn at funerals, not so much out of respect for the deceased, but as a recognition dating from Roman times that everyone uh, is subject to the domination of death. The devil himself was formerly said to materialize out of uh, choice of as a black-skinned man, and up until recent, uh, relatively modern times, in some remote areas, people turned themselves right round on meeting a black man just in case he was the devil in disguise. Conversely, it was once held that touching a black man would bring good luck. Okay, <laughs> that's interesting. It's, and then here's something about the black lambs and a black dog and... There's all kinds of interesting things in those crazy superstitions. This is like a cover page or a, a collage page of all his different letters and stuff. I thought that turned out really cool, as you can see. Um, it was part of the digital. And then they have this pinstripe page. And I thought it could be written on if somebody wanted to. And it's just got like a little thing of tickets in here and one of those little ladies. And, yeah, Poe, poor Poe, his life was so sad. Oh, y'all got to read about it. I mean, it's just something. Now, I've got a corner pocket here, because these were just scraps that was cut out. So, I just glued some goodies on here. I've got the word wicked down here that was sprayed with some of that. Uh, it was sprayed with the mica spray, but it's also from a black... Uh, paper that I've got that is like a wood grain so it's got a really cool grain effect on it so over here we have the raven and then we have this creepy looking thing from Chestita and you know I forgot to do the back of that too <laughs> good grief okay <laughs> I'm forgetting everything all right and then I, this is the paper or the the lace that I glue or a collared black but it didn't turn black it turned gray but it went perfectly with this page because this is not black either this is some kind of a it's it, she 
the white rabbit journals did these clusters and I love them, but mine is nothing close to what hers was. <laughs> so mine is just leftover pieces and I only did one of them for each journal. And then I've got some of the mica spray things on here, some of the, the black texture paste bats. I made this kooky little, it's like a little flower and it's got like a uh, eyelet in there and I put a, uh, and this is actually something that I pounded down to make it like a six petal flower. <laughs> and I put these purple gems in there. Okay, that's a crazy idea I had. <laughs> this here is another of my side tucks. And I really like how it turned out. It's like buttons that I had. I had some wooden buttons and I didn't have enough for all five journal or four journals. So I added a few extras. But there's all this eyelash lace in here. I have some netting. And it's on this solid uh, strip of flat uh, ribbon. Uh, but I like how it turned out. It's kind of, you know. And then I've got these things kind of glued on the page behind it to add to the look. And here is another... <laughs> definition it's a big one it's about death and uh as might be expected death is the focus of a vast body of superstition every culture boasts a secret code of omens that warn of imminent death and most common uh including the appearance of black creatures such as crows the inexplicable howling of dogs and the sound of death knocking to gain admittance Sometimes the threat posed by such phenomena may be evaded by taking certain actions, but at other times there is no escape. Oh my goodness. So, yeah. And it, it goes on all kinds of different stuff. Um, the ringing of bells is reputed to aid the departed by warding off evil spirits. In times gone by, a passing bell was rung as the, pa uh, as the patient approached death while the nine tailors were sounded when death had actually taken place. Hmm. Okay. Spooky, spooky. All right. And I've got some of my little... And as you can see, I've got all these different laces. Some of these things I left poking out because I thought that was part of the gothic look, you know, <laughs> to be a little grungy. And uh, this one here, I turned this journal card upside down just so you could see what was on it and i got another one i'm like <laughs> i'm gonna have to go through all this stuff and make sure i've got the backs done now this here has a card in that way and you can write on the back of it it's actually got a spider up there and it says the haunted place but it's got a few little goo gaws there and that kind of just tucks there mm. This one has nothing, <laughs> but it could be written on. You can see if you wrote on that. Uh, here's one that I just got done for here. I did a video of this the other week, and I didn't put Poe up high enough. Um, so what I did this time is I made the square cutout high enough. Now, you can put something spooky in behind here. I just didn't do it yet, but I will. There's, there's still things to be done to this journal. <laughs> there is. So, Poe kind of goes back up in here. I didn't. Ugh, I'm just not coordinated today. And then his name sticks out down here for the pool. And uh, I forget who I saw. I don't know if this was right, White Rabbit Journal's idea or another person that I saw. Now, this page had the beautiful old candles on the uh, candelabra. So, I decided to kind of play with that. Uh, this was a envelope that I dyed, and I got the melancholy. This is a piece of vellum on the spider netting that I got from Dollar Tree, and I really like how that looked. Uh, you would pull it out, and you have one of the candles in the candle uh, candle cup, whatever you call that candle holder, uh, with some of the paper lace. And I like this file cabinet, so I stuck that back there to to hold this little journal card to be written on and we're we're getting ready to go into the third <laughs> signature now here's this one that's got the, the pretty lace on it and um this is uh this is actually an envelope that i i would have folded into a, an envelope shape and this was the flap 
but I decided to make it this way because I needed that part uh, for the pose face to be the front out there. So I decided to use it this way. And there was another pocket that was from the, the Pink Monarch prints with a spider on it. And I put that down in here so there's a pocket here. And then there's a, like a little tuck pocket there. And I got me a spider down there crawling. Now here is Poe again in the beginning of this signature. Now I cut, I glued these on and then you, you can fray them a little bit at the top and the bottom. And then, you know, it's kind of dangly. So I kind of was leaving those to dangle freely and not trim those off. And then we got a castle here with a raven up on top and just a little cluster. It says the mask of the red death. So I thought that kind of went <laughs> with everything here. We have a pocket here that has another ticket with one of his signatures on there. And then that little bat again. Okay, that goes there. Now this is... I just wanted some wonky pages in it. So uh, this was a strip of something I had uh, extra. So it's got another one of my clusters on it. And I just glued it on the edge here. And you got like a, a little funky edge with some lace and stuff. And you could write on there if you wanted or there. Here's a piece of vellum. Now this is the page that everybody seems to love. <laughs> they loved watching me do this moon. But I wanted this humongous moon um, to be on my page to be the backdrop for my cemetery down here. And then I had done this. Um, it was like paper towels that I'd used in my splat box that got covered with spray after spray after spray. So I had um, I put some texture paste on top. And of course it sucked up that color. But then I went over it with a little bit of a espresso kind of a, a gel kind of stuff to rub on. I put the spider web on here. I have the couple ghosts, a bat, and the spider climbing on the branch. And it is a pocket. <laughs> it is a moon pocket. So one of his letters is here. Not sure who he was writing to, but it just tucks right down in there. And I don't know, it's it, that pocket in this moon or together at one point down there. So sometimes you have to make it go. <laughs> make it go. These, I thought, I saw them on a page. Like two or three of them. And I thought, oh, they look like coffins. I don't know if everybody sees a coffin. But I saw a coffin. <laughs> so I have like these stickers that have crosses on it. So I put them down. I have a die cut that I put here. That kind of is like you're going into the crypt, you know. And then on each one of the tags, I've got, and I extended them too. I have these little extra strips from one of my paper pads, and I extended it. And you've got this creepy body there. And I thought that could be who's buried in the crypt. And I don't know if they're tight, or they just, I have to bend it a certain way to get them out. And here's that one's. And let's see. Yeah, it's... It, <laughs> <laughs> you just have to work with it. And then I have this one. That's a, that, that one's all bones. <laughs> but I kind of liked how that turned out. I put a little bit of lace back here. Kind of the to head the page. Kind of like, you know, they line the coffin with it. <laughs> so here we go. There's another one of my uh, deck pages. But here is that beige one that you can see the, the detail a lot better on. I just love that one. Yeah, I bought up all these laces at Hobby Lobby a while back. And um, I just, I, they were intended for here too. So this is just a collage. I wanted something, I don't know what you would call it, just a little flip. So this one has a, a, a raven on it and one of the little jars. And then you've got a, a few more things behind it. And they just go right there. This is one of his words by Edgar Allan Poe. This was somebody's, I don't know. So it's a mute, I guess it's music. I love the, the, 
the script and the uh, the font on here. I just love it. All right. Then we have Poems of Sorrow and Death on the back side. And look, you've got a shovel and a skull and a harp and a anchor. <laughs> uh, this is one of my earlier things that I did. And I had this, uh, this heat embossed image in black. It's like a scroll that I put on here. And I was saying it was kind of reminiscent of wind that was you know my idea of it and this was like a uh, a crackle stamp and it reminded me of lightning and then I had this uh this splatter stamp that looks like stars <laughs> so that's what I was getting at with all of this but this bled through to the other side so I needed to have something on this page well they had given me this little thing with Edgar Allan Poe's signature on it from 1845 and so I put a little piece behind here and then I have these two I've got just a couple tags for you to write on yeah I didn't like how that bled through so I had to change it now I made this page myself it was just a bunch of old obituaries and things that I had and I try to find the older ones with the better interesting script on it and uh, so I, th I really liked how that turned out. And I just kind of scuffed it with some vintage photo. And then on the back side was the Dictionary of Superstitions. That's where all these superstitions come from that I'm reading in here. It came from this book. And I must have used it for something. I don't know. I probably used the book cover uh, for an altered book at one point. I really love this paper. I had to cut it down a little bit. But... I really love the old world look to it. And since this didn't go all the way over to make a full size page, I put this bit of Tamerlane that was posed on that edge. And here's the other one, Man Killed and Obituary's Death and Woman Stabbed During Fight. This little piece here, this is, um, I've got the black cat down here. I stamped the spider web, and the spider holds this, and you flip it out, and you could write on it if you wanted. Now, you pull this piece out of this long tuck pocket behind there, and it's got, for the most wild yet most homely narrative, which I'm about to pen, I neither ex expect nor solicit belief. And I think that was from the black cat. That's why that's down there. And then... This, I've only got this in this journal here. It is a hanging man. I don't know why I decided to put a hanging man here. But that, to get that hang hang noose on him was more than I could take. So I only did it in this one. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, but anyway, this one, I don't know why I've got candle here. I might decide to change this around at another point to get it nearer to a candle. But... Candles are often lit on the occasions of childbirth, weddings, and funerals to frighten away evil spirits and are regularly lit during church services for the same reasons. In Wales, it is said that an altar candle going out during a service is a sure omen of a clergyman's death. Best known of all is the practice derived from ancient Greek custom of lighting candles on a birthday cake, usually one for each year. If the person celebrating the birthday succeeds in blowing out every candle with a single breath, they are allowed to make a wish, which will surely come true as long as they refuse to divulge it. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. <laughs> oh, You learn all kinds of things. I love learning uh, where things came from, like sayings and uh, you know habits and stuff like that. I, I love all that kind of thing. Now, I've told you before when I did this that I was probably going to put a, a picture here, and I thought this one was perfect. And of course, I put the little raven down there with him. And there, I guess, is one of his poems. I don't exactly know which one it is. It doesn't really say. It just has a date on it. Uh, and then this one has uh, many a year ago. And I think that that's a song as well. Now, I forget who I saw this from, but they did a window 
with, you know, an envelope. So that's what I did here. And I had seen where they kept using this bird. He's from the main kit. And I just loved it. So I took all these strips of all the things I'd been using. There's usually a strip that I cut off of the side when it's a 12 inch piece of paper to cut it down to 11. And that's usually what I used here. And then I just kind of framed it. And it, it actually almost frames most of this over here as well, but not quite. But in here, I have um, the word fright. I have Epsom salt. And I have this that I, I made up just to be like a little tuck. But it's the definition for haunt. Of a ghost manifest itself at a place regularly. <laughs> and that tucks in here. Just like that. Okay. And this is a cool little lace. It's actually an elastic lace, and I didn't realize it. But it's a velvet feeling down the center there. It's really cool. Now this, I've only made this for the one journal. Um, I did mean to put some lace over here, and I didn't do it, did I? So I'll probably go, come back in here and put a, a string of lace, because I messed up right there. But it was like, um, I folded it. Um accordion folded it and then I, I sewed I tucked some paper in it and then I sewed through it and then I put some little goo gaws on it yeah that's how that's how it was done this is just a little extra uh, card that I had and then the definition for lost unable to find one's way not knowing one's whereabouts <laughs> Oops, that was supposed to be up here. Okay, two, denoting something that has been taken away or cannot be recovered. I need to fix that in my computer. <laughs> I really like how I got the uh, the branch and these little guys. All right. <laughs> and, ugh, and I need to either cut that down or to ink it. Good grief. I'm, you know, you have to flip and flip and flip through a journal because you always forget something. You just, you, you see, I'm forgetting things. Look how white and blaring that is. This is a piece of vellum that I got from Hobby Lobby. I loved it because it had some gold on it as well. Here is another definition. Boy, they're all in this last signature, aren't they? So, coffin. European tradition warns that it is reckless in the extreme, for anyone to lie in a coffin, even for a joke, before their time has come. In addition, no corpse should be laid in the coffin, wearing clothing belonging to a living person. As the clothing rots, so the owner of the clothes will suffer a decline in health. It is customary for coffin lids to be nailed shut, but some people prefer to leave them loose, so that their occupants may be able to escape more easily on the day of resurrection. Any chair or table upon which a coffin rests should be tipped over when the coffin is removed to guard against another death occurring in the household in the near future. Okay. That one's short enough. I could read it all. And um, I got another definition. Uh, beware. All the definitions and, um, and uh, things are back here and the superstitions. Be cautious and alert to the dangers of. Okay. So we got a creepy guy. And then we have this. I've got the thumb pull over here because I didn't want to, to go through that. And you've got this little jar with Poe on it down here. I think that's kind of cool. Creepy, creepy. All right. Here's my tomb. I mean, uh, my coffin. And that's why the coffin is back here. Um... But everybody liked how I made this. But this is a coffin card. Coffin journal card. It has caskets and coffins stamped in there. And, and heat embossed. And then we got our body here. And I did this stamping effect to cover it around like it's dirt. And then I found a skull that was just perfect. I lucked out. And we got that on there. And then you can write on the back as well. And then I tucked it down into this little... It was a journal card... But I used it like that. And I thought that turned out right. And then I had to buy this beautiful black lace. With like the. I don't know if it's beads or what you would consider those. It does have some rhinestones on it. But I just had to have it. <laughs> so I put that in here. And 
Then it's, that's another letter. I think that's from his grandfather because that's David Poe. And at the end, we have our raven. And we have our, um, it's like a dream catcher, but it's a bone catcher. And I did a video on this as well. I've got some little bird feathers down here. And it's got a few beads. And then it's got the bones that are dangling. And then you have just like a card or something. Each one, I think, has got something different. But that just tucks in here. And that could be written on. And I've got like a big... Is that a, uh, a snap? It was a huge snap that I got. And then that was a 31. So I'll put that in each one of the eyes. Just for something different. And then that is the back paper. And then the back cover. So I hope you enjoyed that. I didn't have everything done. But hopefully by the time I show you another one of these. I will have everything done. And you'll get the gist of it. <laughs> All right, I want to thank everybody for coming by and visiting and seeing what I had to show you today. I hope you got a lot of inspiration from this. And like I said, I'll be doing one of these covers when I get back to show you how I assembled it. And um, everybody, all my subscribers and viewers, thank you, thank you. And I will talk to you again soon. Bye-bye, everybody.